Okay, today RW Mods is going to show you the proper way to assemble and a few things to check for on a nitro engine. Uh, this is the same Alpha A852 that we took apart in the other video. Um, so I've taken this apart and I cleaned it in a parts washer. I have a hot water parts washer that I use. It does a nice job, doesn't leave an oily film. Main thing with any time you take motor part is cleanliness. Everything, any speck of dirt can put a scratch in the piston and it's, it's just everything has to be clean. Um, well first thing when I look at is uh, when I take an engine apart is look at the crank pin wire. I mean, micrometer is the best way to do it. Um, calipers can kind of give you an idea of what the crank is worn. And you want to check all the way around the crank when checking it. The uh, the wear will always happen on the thrust side as it's pushing, you know, the explosion. It's pushing the crank down. And uh, it's only going to show up. It might sh show good one way, but the other way it's worn. Another thing when I uh, do an engine for somebody is uh, measure the rod bushing. I have a nice bore gauge here. And uh, checks to one ten thousandths of an inch. And uh, this rod is not showing anywhere. And that will also too wear just on the top side of the rod bushing. Um, for crank pin wear too also uh, three thousandths out around is generally kind of I put it as a backup motor. And then also if you have three thousandths wear in the crank, three thousandths wear on the rod, you're talking six thousandths, that's unacceptable also. Sometimes just a new rod will get you by for a while or just for that backup motor. Um, another thing I do when I take apart a motor, whether it's for myself or for a customer, is uh, clean the piston top. Get that nice and shiny, get the carbon off there. What I do there is I uh, put a, some 600 grit, 600, 800 grit sandpaper on a nice flat surface. I use a surface plate and uh, work it back and forth. Uh, try not to get it to tip. Uh, work it back and forth. It seems to be the best way that I've found. Um, also make sure you do not round the corner of the piston and I usually uh, usually leave the darkness on the piston and leave everything. If there's some scratches or like a bearing went out or some sand got in it or whatever I'll sometimes uh, sand that also but not very often. Another thing I do is uh, flatten the ceiling surface. Again there too I use a, a stone, like a machine of stone, work it back and forth. You'd be a, even brand new engines I do this on. It's unbelievable how not flat those are sometimes. The uh, another thing I do when I rebuild an engine is clean up the head button. Get all that carbon off there. Um, it really is kind of a little hard to do at home. I use a lathe, spin it up with some you know 600, 800 grit sandpaper with some WD-40 on it, and, and while it's spinning, work it. And I use a polishing compound to get that cleaned up. It also you know between the piston and head button uh, being polished up, it reflects heat. Uh, prevents the carbon from building up again. It just uh, makes a nice, clean, good running engine. As far as uh, another thing to look for is uh, the rear bearing. This one I've already installed the front bearing. You want to use special tools, uh, the right tools for any time changing bearings. It's it just uh, helps the bearing to last so much longer. One thing I do when you get the block cleaned up is. Uh, with the oils, what I found is with the oils from the nitro fuels, the castor oils, with little thicker oils in there, the bearing will feel pretty good. Then you get uh, get it cleaned up, get some just uh, WD-40 on there, they'll uh, feel kind of loose. And I'll, I'll stick the crank in there, kind of rock it back and forth. And you can kind of tell, it's, it's a touch, and it took me rebuilding quite a few motors before I got where I could tell if a bearing was bad or not. When in doubt, just replace it. Uh, they're not too expensive. It'll save save you parts down the road. Um, I guess we're uh, about ready to assemble this. What I'll do is I'll I use a just an oil or um, I'll just use a Mobile One automotive oil and I'll give, give the balls some oil here and uh, put some oil on the crank pin and uh, slide the crankshaft in. 
and we'll put on the piston in, getting some oil and rod bushing. We'll uh, slide the piston in, line up the rod and the bushing, pop that on there, and I'll put some oil in the sleeve. A lot, of, a lot of these parts, when I when I clean the piston sleeve, I'll just spray it with some WD-40, blow it off with air hose, uh, wipe it with some rags and stuff. Uh, the only thing you really need to be careful on on a motor with WD-40 is the, if the crank has been uh, epoxy ramped or siliconed. Uh, sometimes we'll eat that. And then we'll uh, line up your, your uh, alignment and uh, Drop it down in there a little ways. So now you just got to wrap the piston back and forth a couple times. Get it up in the sleeve and drop it down. Make sure you're li lined up there. And then uh, another thing too we'll look at is the, the head shims. A lot of times I get an engine, take it apart, and there's dirt embedded in these shims. Want to make sure everything's clean. Uh, take these and wipe them with a the rag separate. Put them on your head button. Sometimes there's markings for the exhaust side. You can kind of pay attention when you take the motor apart. And uh, pop that head button on. And then, uh, um, as far as the back plate, same way as when we took it apart, you can break the piston skirt when putting a uh, back plate on. Make sure the piston is up, or at least most of the way up. And uh, slide her in there. Make sure most of these are, there's only one way up, they're either marked or pay attention to which way it came apart. Sometimes the piston will work its way back down, so just make sure before you put it in. And uh, give it a little pop here. You'll, you kind of, you feel a pop like that and you feel some resistance, you know the O-ring's pretty good and that wouldn't need to be sealed. Um, some motors, uh, OS's kind of don't have quite as much pop there and you probably should make sure you replace that O-ring. So I guess the uh, rest of it is get the head on the right way. And then uh, another thing I do too is uh, head bolts. I always uh, put some oil on the, on the threads after the bolt's clean before I drop them in there. That just prevents it from stripping that block, the aluminum block, when you tighten them down. That's about it. And uh, engine assembly, we'll tighten all the, you want to tighten uh, Crisscross, just kind of make sure everything's snug, and then kind of cross, uh, cross from each other. Tighten these two, then tighten these two, and kind of keep working your way up. That's it. Thank you for watching. This is RW Mods.